Welcome back to Morning Markets on Wednesday, the 20th of October. Turning first to equity markets in equities in sterling terms in the UK, the FTSE 100 was up 20 basis points. In the US, the S&P 500 up 74 basis points. The Nasdaq, 71 basis points. Europe was up 40 basis points. Asia, outside of Japan, up 75 basis points. And Japan, up 13 basis points. In terms of bond markets in the UK, the 10-year gilt yield was in at one point. 1.6%, so up three basis points on the day. And in the US, the 10-year Treasury yield was at 1.64%, so up just around four basis points. In terms of commodity markets, gold was slightly stronger, up a quarter of a percent. And oil, Brent crude, was 85 spot $1 per barrel, so up 90 basis points. In terms of currency markets, the dollar was slightly weaker. It was down around 20 basis points using the Dixie index against a comparable basket of international currencies. And sterling against the dollar was 138 sterling against the euro, 119. Yesterday, we received strong corporate earnings reports from the US. One example being Johnson & Johnson, who reported earnings ahead of analyst expectations. The firm raised the 2021 Profit forecasts on the back of strong sales in immune system treatment drugs and medical equipment or consumer health units. The share price was up 2% on the day in dollar terms. Several companies did cite higher energy costs and material delay times as as a challenge in the guidance as we expected. An example being consumer goods bellwether Procter & Gamble. Despite the acknowledgement, it was reassuring to see that they were able to maintain full year earnings expectations. This early acknowledgement that certain companies can manage inflationary expectations, retain earnings expectations, increased the appetite for equities by market participants on the day. Given the improved sentiment from investors, investors retreated from longer dated sovereign bonds, so 10 to 30 year maturity bonds in the US reflected in the, the, the higher yield on the day, while shorter maturity, so two to seven year treasuries were of greater interest, reflected in a, a modest reduction in, in yields there, taking the yield to the highest levels since June um, and spreads between 10 and two year bonds to 125 basis points, so a bit of widening there. The US dollar was weaker against a basket of international currencies as expectations that central banks outside of the US are getting closer to raising interest rates at this point. In terms of data points, yesterday we received an update on housing starts from the US. So the data set on housing starts tracks the change in the number of new residential buildings that began construction during the reported month. Often useful uh, leading indicator to the rate of acceleration in economies. Given the strong recovery in growth which we've seen and the expectation that whilst growth will remain firm, the rate is, of change is starting to moderate. We give it, Given the ongoing supply chain challenges, it was no surprise to see the index moderate 1.6% over the month. This morning, we received the UK CPI year-on-year inflation print. This came in slightly lower than the September at 3.1%. Analysts were expecting the print to be similar to the August print at 3.2%. There was a bit of a, a slowdown in hospitality and, and restaurants or a, re, a slowdown in price increases there as, as there was a bit of a base effect coming through given we had a surge in demand in August 2020 with the government's Eat Out to Help Out scheme. The fact is keeping the print above that 3% level and above the Bank of England's target of 2% include transportation costs, which were up 8.4% year on year. So far this morning, just looking at the reaction, we've seen bond yields moderate in a more pronounced fashion at the shorter end of the curve with yields in in two basis points in in, in the two-year bonds. Um, But we're seeing mild reductions in yields across the curve. Thank you very much for watching. We look forward to bringing you up to date tomorrow here on Morning Markets. Subscribing to the True Potential YouTube channel is quick and easy. Simply go to the channel on your desktop or through the YouTube app on your phone and click the subscribe button. You can then press the notification bell symbol if you wish to be notified as and when new videos are released. Doing this is a great way to keep yourself updated with market developments and personal finance insights. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed and we look forward to continuing to help you do more with your money.